Hi, Sam here at Model Chile, and here I have Italeri's 1 to 35 scale M4A3E8 Sherman from the movie Fury, which uh, the movie itself came out early last year, I think. And uh, I've seen this on the internet for a while, this kit, and it was just one of those things where you see it online and you think it's yeah, it's kind of tempting, but I'll hoard off for now. And then it turned up in my local hobby shop and. Once I had a look inside the box, I was just like, yep, I need to get this right now. So here it is. So um, yeah, let's have a look inside the box. Okay, so we've got instruction booklet. Yeah, looking pretty straightforward. And paint guide at the back, so we've got one, the one from Fury there, another version, and version number three, with slightly different markings. And decal sheet. So you've got the Fury name there, which goes on the barrel. And lower hull. And one big bag, so the parts there. We'll be having a closer look at those as I build it. And two versions of the tracks, so we've got these tracks which go on the the Fury version and the set of tracks for a different version. And some cotton string, I'm not sure if this is for the... Well, it's probably to tie down all the accessories, but we'll, uh, we'll see as we go. Okay, so I'm just about done with the build here. And yeah, just got to put on one last piece, which is the uh, signature German gas mask and helmet, which goes down there. And yeah, so overall impressions of the kit, it's been uh, pretty enjoyable. It's obviously not as detailed or as refined as a Tamiya or Trumpeter kit, but it was quite a bit cheaper, so. You can't really expect too much, really. I mean, there wasn't any 
thread of which all clear parts, so it's been pretty simple construction wise. And there was a few gaps here and there, but nothing too major. And a couple of errors in the instructions, but they were um, pretty easily rectified. Just a couple of mislabeled parts and some really vague and generic location points. But apart from that, it's yeah, it's been quite fun. And everything's um, out of the box, so it comes with a hell of a lot of accessories and additional bits and pieces. And it's not 100% accurate to the Fury from the movie, but it's in the spirit of Fury, I think. And there was only really one substitution from the kit. This metal tow cable was moulded in plastic and it was far too long for this, so I cut off the end hooks and then just replaced it with this metal spare one that I had to lying about. And I super glued all the ropes so this way you can see a bit of misting and that should disappear once the paint goes down. And all the glue smudges and smears and other bits it's looking a bit a bit shoddy at the moment but hopefully when the paint goes down it should uh, start to tidy up a bit. And I'm still debating about how much rope I need to put on for all these accessories at the back. It's quite hard to get good reference photos of just how much tie downs they actually used and needed. Especially for these, these stacks of boxes. So I'm not quite sure how to tackle that just yet. But overall I'm pretty happy with it. It's been quite a fun build. And I was expecting just a, a simple and quick construction, nothing too detailed, nothing too serious, or wanting to be too accurate. Just a week weekend project really. So now it's ready for the primer. Okay, so it's had a primer layer using uh, Tamiya's Fine Surface Primer from a can, which I just do out in the garage. And now to do a base coat of Vallejo Model Air NATO Black. Okay, so for the green camouflage pattern, I'm using Vallejo's Olive Drab, which is indicated in the instructions. Now, overall, the tank is quite dark in the movie. It's all very much looks like one colour. So I've thinned down the Olive Drab quite a bit, so hopefully the uh, black will have a chance to shine through and sort of darken the overall colours down a bit. Now I'm just giving the model a very light, thinned down dusting of camo dark green, just to give it a uh, an overall um, more of a greenish look as it does in the movie.
so that's most of the detail work done and I've just given it another gloss coat so it's now ready for decals and um, just a quick note on the track issue I ran into um, as I construct as I constructed this and as I do most tanks I usually do all the wheels first and then paint the track and then attach it later on because there's usually enough room to manoeuvre but in this case you may notice these rollers are a bit wonky and that's because there just wasn't any room between the roller and the hull to fit the track it was just the track was either too thick or these were just in the wrong place but basically I just had to snap these off and then they're just attached to the track they're not actually attached to the tank anymore they're just sort of floating there because they just don't line up with the uh, wheels at the back so that was a bit of a uh, bit of a shame and this also will wait it's not quite lined up properly either and I did notice that the other set of tracks that came with the model are a lot thinner so maybe, and I'm just guessing, that the model was designed for these tracks and for this release for the uh, the Fury tank they uh, put in these other set of tracks to match the tank in the movie and they just happen to be too thick to fit in there right but as I said I'm just guessing, I mean I'm not sure I mean it could have been me stuffing it up or or something but they just didn't fit so a bit of a disappointment there but Everything else uh, turned out alright. So yeah, so um, onto the decals. Now the instructions do indicate a couple of stars on the turret on each side but I've gone back and checked reference photos just to make sure where they go and they're just they're just not there on the tank so um, just another thing to uh, be aware of just uh, discard the stars they're uh, not needed so it's had another very light coat of gloss just to seal in the decals and now we're just going to start the weathering by applying some chipping. And I've just got a bit of black paint on the end, end of a sponge and then just lightly dab that on parts where I want chipped paint. Now I'm drawing just a tiny bit of gunmetal on some of these chipped areas just to show a bit of um, fresh chipping where the metal hasn't had a chance to rust yet. Now just for a very light wash of Vallejo rust and again I'm keeping it quite light because in the movie there isn't really a lot of well that I can see um, evidence of rust or a lot of damage Maybe because the whole thing's just covered in a very thick layer of dirt and mud, so a lot of that's been hidden. So I don't want to go overboard with the with the amount of rust and stuff like that, because I will be covering it with a bit of mud and um, just grime on the next stage. Now we're just going back and painting some of this rope. I did plan to. Um, dry brush it but I'm pretty much just painting it at this point which uh, isn't easy as you can imagine I really should have thought about this before I put it down but we'll see how we go 
Now with a bit of olive drab on the end of a brush and then wiped away on a bit of paper towel so there's hardly any paint left. I'm just doing a, a few light green streaks. For the final wash I'm just using Vallejo's light grey which uh, you wouldn't think would work on a dark vehicle such as this but it'll it'll settle into the um, the recesses and just bring out a bit of extra definition especially on some of these light parts now for the dirt layer I'm using equal parts of Vallejo mud brown and dirt uh, 10 parts each to two part, uh, one part black just to darken it up a bit so now I'm just going to cover the whole wheels and suspension area For the uh, mud effects using pigments, I'm using Vallejo European Earth pigment, which is a bit reddish. So I've added just a bit of different mixes of Tamiya red brown and just the Vallejo dirt. I'm just mixing it in a painting tray and just using a rough brush, just start dabbing it on. And I'll just use different colours of brown to build up the layers and just give it a bit of uh, variation. So the weathering has been applied using the pigments and I just use them to scuff up the top surfaces along the turret and along the front and along the sides and then attached the antenna and then anchored it down with a piece of twisted cotton just by uh, twisting it up and then super gluing it so it stayed straight and then using the little, the little loop super glued it to the antenna there and then pulled it down and then tied it at the anchor and then super glued that a little bit which was quite tricky but I managed it in the end and then got a couple of strips of masking tape and then attach them to this roll here and then wrap them around a couple of little spare handles that I clipped to the side the ends off so it made them a bit smaller and then stuck them to the side of the turret and then wrapped the, uh, the tape around and then put on uh, Brad Pitt's little Thompson machine gun and just a few more silver chips along the front just to indicate small arms fire and yeah so now it's ready for the final flat coat which is Tamiya's flat clear and with the flat coat down I'm pretty happy to call this one done so I hope you've enjoyed watching the build and if you've got any um, feedback or comments or suggestions then please leave a comment below I'm always happy to uh, read your feedback and reply and uh, yeah I'm really happy with how the kit came out I had a lot of fun painting it up and applying the weathering and some of the smaller details I've certainly learned a lot from this build and uh, I'll hopefully be using some of that experience on builds in the future and I'll also put up some photos of the kit on my blog, which I will put a link to, so you can get a closer look at the tank itself. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, and uh, until next time, take care.